Yeah. Dr. Ho, Ho Donghua, he's the director of Harrison Spinardos Hospital in Chongdam in Seoul. He's the vice president of the World UB Society and one of the UB leaders in the world. One of the greatest contributors to UB development in the world through scientific papers, textbook author, and spy uh, international speaks. It's a pleasure to have you today, Dr. Ho, and I would like you to give us the, our lecture today. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. So unfortunately, I'm not the leader, uh, uh, just the experienced surgeons of the UBE. Yes, thank you. Anyway, I'm Star. So today's my topic is uh, contralateral sublaminar approach using the bipolar uh, UBE. Yes. So contralateral approach is a little familiar to the endoscopic spine surgeon, we frequently perform the contralateral sublaminar decompressions. Uh, today is my topic, the sublaminar contralateral decompressions for the exiting of routine. So, so this is a, a two routine incisions for the, the UBE procedures. So based on the, uh, this midline of the base uh, disc space, we have two portals, uh, one centimeter superior and one centimeter inferior. So, Usually we made uh, two portals like this. However, it's for the decompression of the uh, for, of foramens and the exiting of root two, we have to make uh, two portals uh, slightly lower comparing to the, uh, the routine uh, UV portal making portals. So, so this is uh, the bone of area for the contralateral sublamina approach. We have to do a small size of the ipsilateral small laminotomy. Sometimes we have to do uh, ipsilateral uh, sublaminar bone drilling as well as the sublaminar bone drilling for the uh, exposure of the contralateral side, the foramens, and the exiting knob root here, right? This. So this is the overview. So further, uh, some doctors prefer the, the shaver drill like this. Some doctors uh, prefer the small size or the uh, waterproof uh, high-speed drill. So for the contralateral sublar laminar approaches, the waterproof high-speed drill is uh, the better. I strongly recommend uh, these kinds of the uh, waterproof uh, small uh, thin uh, drill system. So, so if we did a, a tilting of the two portals, we uh, successfully the approve. Uh, approach uh, for the, the contralateral side, as well as uh, the traversing, as well as the axing of roots like this. Just tilting, without any tilting of the patients or table, we can easily access to the contralateral side, uh, traversing of root as well as the axing of root. So we have to find the two surgical landmarks. Surgical landmark is uh, very important for the successful and complete decompression of the contralateral side. First is the contralateral ligantiflavum. After removal of the ligantiflavum, we have to find the uh, foraminal ligament and SAP. And so we, if we remove the partially remove of the SAP and the foraminal ligament, we, fi we finally we can uh, check and meet the contralateral axis of the Doubled like this. So uh, this is another uh, random mark. First is foraminal ligament. The second is uh, SAP. So you can see the foraminal ligament. You can see the medial border and the tip of the SAP. So after removal of the SAP, partially, we can clearly expose of the contralateral foraminal ligament we buckled or hyper, hyper, hypertrophied foraminal ligament, we can finally we meet the contralateral axon load here. I carefully remove the contralateral foraminal ligament, hypertrophied. You don't need to hurry up, just uh, achieve the contralateral decompressions. So slowly, we can finally meet the contralateral axis loft here. So the, the remnant of the foraminal ligament, I remove. We finally meet the uh, 
perineural fat and axing of root, right? This so most important uh, surgical landmark of for the decompression of the uh, contralateral axing of root. We have to find the SAP and foraminal ligament. After removal of the foraminal ligament, too, we can finally uh, meet the contralateral axing of the here. So I I will show my case. This uh, female uh, male patient uh, presented with uh, cloud occasions with uh, especially right leg pain. You can see the prominent disc herniations as well as the lateral recess stenosis. So my plan is the unilateral laminotomy and bilateral decompressions, and then the lobster disc removal by the contralateral approaches. Now I will show my video. So. So, right to uh, left to right, uh, contralateral approaches. Firstly, I did a mid uh, midline laminotomy at L4S3 pose. The first step is very similar to the ULBD routine. So, I did the left side laminotomy at the L3-4 area, and I did the contralateral sublaminar uh, bone drillings and the partial removal of the sublaminar area. And uh, Hypertrophied contralateral ligament flab removal by using the caressin punches, curettes, and pituitary forceps. Firstly, I decompress contralateral lateral recess for the contralateral extin of uh, traversal of the decompressions. Firstly, I did, and then move to the superiorly for the removal of the contralateral side lobster discriminations around the contralateral. Action of drop root. Uh, this point is the disc space. Uh, this is the axilla area. So you can see the lobster disc herniations easily. So I first, first fragment I remove. So also I remove the lobster disc herniations. Maybe the axilla lobe root is placed around here. So after the complete removal of the a lobster disc herniation around the foramen, you can see the uh, axing lobe here. You can see the axing lobe. And now I multiple fragment the disc herniations. And you can see the L3 lobe and axing lobe here. So by, uh, I completely remove the lobster disc particles using the contralateral approaches. So you can see the axing lobe here and around the disc space here and traversing novel to or side decompress. After surgery, you can see the uh, post-operative MRI images show complete removal of the lobster disc herniations as, as well as I did the central canal uh, decompressions. As we know, root extin uh, extra areas. And these patients are presented uh, severe post leg pain, you can see the uh, severe stenosis and posteriorly migrated lobster disc herniations. Oh, this patient, maybe 10 years ago, uh, he received multi level spinal fusions. However, this patient has a long history of the ischemic heart disease. So uh, I cannot decide the fusion extension procedures. Also, this uh, patient do not want fusion extensions. So I did her. Uh, ULB with the contralateral uh, approaches. So, right to, to left side approaches, uh, I did uh, L23 laminotomy, and you can see the severely hypertrophied ligand flavum. And then I moved to the contralateral side, you can see the severely hypertrophied ligand flavum. And then you can see the sublamina area. And then you can see the L3, L2. I expose of the proximal to distal end of the ligand flavum and then removal of, of the ligand flavum without any indentation of the dura. And then I move remove to the foraminal ligament. You can see the posteriorly migrated uh, disc material. The disc material is here with the dura. 
and then I first little limb of the posteriorly migrated disc material firstly. And you can, uh, I did a sublaminar bone drilling for the complete exposure of the contralateral axis load. Now, L2, you can see the severe adhesion and the posteriorly migrate lobster disc particles. And then I remove, you can see the SAP and foraminal ligament. After removal of the foraminal ligament, Finally, we can meet the extinct load root here. This is the tip of the SAP. You can see the extinct load root here. Maybe the lower board of the pedicles. I completely move the uh, foraminal lobster disc herniations. This is the disc space. You can see the L2. Axing log to disk space. L2, disk space, and L3. And you can see the mid, can, you can see the medial board of the pedicle. Move to the, so after the decompression, you can see the complete uh, decompression of the central canal as well as the posteriorly migrated disk materials. So you can see there a complete limb of the foraminal lobster disc herniations. So third case is a 44 years old male patient. This patient also presented their bilateral leg pains. You can see there right side uh, foraminal lobster disc herniations and right, right side uh, paracentral disc herniations. Also this patient has their Right side, uh, ipsilateral left side, down migrated disc herniations at the L5S S1. This patient at L5S1, the three kinds of the disc pathology. What is your plan? Fusions or discectomies. So my uh, decision is uh, the ipsilateral and contralateral approach using the bipolar UBE. So firstly, I the removal of the ipsilateral disc and uh, I moved to the contralateral side and contralateral paracentral disc limber. And finally, I mo moved to the uh, axing lobe root here area. So I finally removed of the prominal uh, lobster disc herniations. Firstly, I removed of the ipsilateral disc herniations through the axilla area. I moved to the contralateral uh, side, and contralateral terabosh lobe root around uh, lobster disc herniations, around the contralateral traversal of it, and then move to the superiorly, and then move to the uh, contralateral foraminal lobster disc herniations like this. And after, are we just using one stone? I catch the three bird, uh, central canals, ipsilateral and post, uh, contralateral and contralateral axial of root. So after the surgery, so you can see the complete removal of the bilateral rupture discoronations as well as the foraminal rupture discoronations. So the modifications of the contralateral approaches have very powerful energies. So, so sometimes so the, the bleeding is uh, some problem. However, we can, if you use the uh, Elman type, the steering type of the LF, you can easily uh, control the contralateral or uh, from it. And so around the axing over it, here is the bleeding control. I strongly recommend to use the Elman type RF like this. So the final case, uh, sometimes I did uh, combined approaches, contralateral sublamin approaches with the uh, ipsilateral paraspinal approaches. I will show, you can see the uh, bilateral Trebosin of root decompression and move to the superiorly. You can see the contralateral axial root. I put in the, the marked gel comb, put in the around the axial of root axilla area, and then move to the contralateral side, ipsilateral side. I did the paraspinal approach for the complete 
decompressions of the X node. And I find the, the marked Z piece through the uh, ipsilateral paraspinal approach. And finally, I can complex decompressions or, and long track decompression of the contralateral X node here. So in my opinion, so control approach is many has advantage. Of the, we can clearly uh, see the clearly and completely decompressions of the external object as well as from and also we can uh, decompress so traverse noble to ipsilateral and contralateral. So we can see the, the medial uh, lower border of the pedicle. So we can minimize bone walks, so we can minimize the uh, facet joint injury. So it, it is a very uh, good advantage. So, so optimal indication is the, the herniated disc and the foramina stenosis and the cystic lesions. So uh, the contralateral approaches using the bipolar has many benefits and many advantages. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Sure, Dr. Ho. Uh, I would actually like to ask one question to you uh, regarding the contralateral sublaminar approach. For us that are starting our journey in UB world, uh, how, what would you recommend as our, for our learning curve on how many cases should we, should we have to perform successfully this technique? Yes, so so if we have uh, the, a lot of case of the uh, uni unilateral laminotomy and bilateral decompressions, you uh, if you have uh, can finish one level decompressions until the one hour, just start. Okay, so so we the extended laminot ipsilateral laminotomy and sublaminar bone removal and the find the foraminal ligament and the tip of of the SAP and the partial removal of the tip of the SAP and foraminal ligament, we can finally can see the contralateral X noble. So if if we can uh, one level decompression or one level disectomy until within the one hour, just try this. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much once again for your time.